Good day, good people of the interwebs. Today I wanted to make a video, and I've been thinking about it for quite a while, the problems we are having with recognizing the problems that we are in. Now that sounds ominous enough, doesn't it? Well, yeah, most people don't even recognize it, so I guess it's not ominous enough. The thing is this, our society, our culture, is under siege. Now that sounds scary enough, sure, but it mustn't be true. I mean, it can't be true, can it? Yeah, no, it is. And a lot of people tell you, well, it's neo-Marxism, and they might be somewhat right, though personally I don't really think Marx has much to do with it. But it comes from the ideologies that are based on what Marx said. Which Red Wing Party, I'm going to call them Red Wing, I'm not going to call them Left anymore, but which Red Wing Party is based on people voluntarily going along with it? No, 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 none of them are. What we are witnessing, and, and this is a slow process, I mean, it, it, it's literally been going on for decades, maybe even for more than a hundred years. We don't notice it, we don't see it, but it's been happening. They are changing the way we believe, the way we perceive, the way we experience reality. And this has to be done. It really has to be done. Because if they don't do this, their revolution will fail. Now, how do we know this? Look at all the countries where the cultural revolution, or Marxism, or communism, or socialism, or whatever you want to call it. Look at all the countries where this has been done. Now, you will notice that every new iteration will have added something to the revolution to give it a bigger chance of success. Every, well, most. After all, when it started in Russia, uh, they were turned against the wealthy. And eventually everyone was wealthy that wasn't poor enough unless you were part of the operatchik. And so they started turning against the people. And the people had problems following it. This is true for everywhere where it happened. Mostly everywhere. Because there's one country where they seem to have, at least for the time being, been successful in brainwashing the populace. What country is that? That is China. And in China, Mao Zedong, and I don't think he thought of it himself, but fair enough, Mao Zedong and his cultural revolution, which was uh, done by the Red Guards, revolutionaries, they added a thing to the revolution. The destruction of the four olds. Now, what are the four olds? Now, this is a very important thing, because the four olds are what makes a culture a culture. But they brought them down to keywords. Now, I don't do Chinese, so I had to find an English translation of these keywords. So, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I've done my best. Now, these four key concepts, not key words really, key concepts, are old ideas, old culture, old customs, and old habits. Do you really want to destroy a culture? You have to destroy all four of these. And this is something that's been going on in most Western countries for the longest time. Now, Mind you, there are Western countries that are actually recognizing this and standing up against this, which will then condemn them in the eyes of the other Western countries. For example, if we look at Europe, Hungary and Italy have tried to stand up to combat the attack of the Four Olds, which um, basically gave them a negative review by the European Union and other European countries. Denmark same thing. How dare you not fall in lockstep? And yes, the word lockstep in this is very apt. And the funny thing is, you can't fall 
in lockstep because you don't know which the how do you call it sequence of the lockstep will be after you joined because that's another thing with the rat cultures they change on a whim to make sure that if you do not join them and change on a whim with them you are bad for example feminism for the longest time was one of the primary western attributes to the red card how can i say this well feminism from day one has been against old ideas old customs old culture and old habits they wanted to change society now don't get me wrong i don't think everything feminism has said is wrong the thing is they said it to the wrong people but no one cared because hell people still don't care we still are being told how women earn less than men which is factually true but it has nothing to do with their pay i mean men on average used to work still work sorry full time whereas women on average work part time so guess what women get paid less oh they have the same hourly wage but per month yeah it'll be lower why because they didn't put in as much time now this is obvious to people who look further than the cognitive dissonance that's being fed to us but um a lot of people believe the cognitive dissonance that's being poured over us but the feminist movement is a great example of what happens when you do not follow lockstep because there is this thing called a turf a trans exclusionary feminist well, they can't be good feminists anymore because they do not follow lockstep and as such they now too are getting attacked as if they are those patriarchal white men that the rest of the feminists still want to believe in so much so that nearly all exclusionary movements in the western world are against the white man or people who believe that the white man didn't do it that bad which kind of then forces black people to be called white supremacists because they agree with other white people i never said it made sense but this is the world we are now living in and with that old ideas old culture old custom and old habits are under attack this is what happened when people started attacking street names and statues because these are street names and statues of um, our history old culture old ideas yeah well but but these people well they were participating in slavery yeah no you know what i'm willing to believe you on that was that all they did didn't they do anything else and never you mind but slavery was as common as muck in the world there are countries in the world where we still have slavery and i don't mean wage slavery or any of the other modern bullshit terms people brought onto it well yeah but prisoners are slaves too yeah but they had to commit a crime before they became those well quote unquote slaves but there are countries where slavery is still accepted hell libya had open slave markets last year can't make sure that they had them this year but yeah they were there mind you they weren't there for the longest time they've suddenly puffed up again something to do with Gaddafi no longer being there and ISIS trying to get a hold in there foothold hold whatever we are blind to the reality of these things because we are made blind because our media does everything it can well our mainstream media sorry to destroy the old ideas the old culture the old customs and the old habits the four olds and most people don't recognize this because why would anyone do that but all of a sudden it makes sense yeah i yeah, know you know um we have to call people differently we can't say he or she anymore that's that's an old idea that's an old custom it's an old habit it doesn't belong in our current culture 
people could use whatever term they want to describe themselves. And you know what? Personally, I don't care. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. Whatever pronoun you want to use, I don't care. The problem happens to be when you demand of me to do the same thing. There is no such thing as compelled speech. Where do we have compelled speech? Well, communist countries. It's a very old joke. I'm sure I must have used it once or twice before on, on one of my streams or one of my videos. But a Western journalist, reporter, went to one of the communist countries, uh, Poland, Russia, back in the day. And uh, he started talking to one of the citizens there. He said, oh, well, yeah, yeah. How, how is life in, in your perfect utopian state? Well, yeah, I can't complain. Okay. So, 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 so how's the job market? Well, can't complain. Why? Right. Oh, okay. So, 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 so how, how, how is the food and the diversity in food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I can't complain. Right. Do you guys have automobiles and, 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 and radio and television shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. You yeah. can't, can't complain. Can't complain. So what is the problem in this country? I can't complain. Now, it might sound as a silly joke, and, and, and for a lot of people it probably is, because we can't imagine what it means not being allowed to complain. Don't worry, the way we're going, we'll probably learn what that means soon enough. Because it means that you as an individual have no longer the right to be an individual. Sick as that might sound, it's the world we are heading into. No, no, we have to call mothers birthing people. Because there are women out there who don't like to be called women. And, and, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's less than a, a tenth of a percent, maybe less than a hundredth of a percent. But because of that small of smallest minorities, all of a sudden, the old ideas, the old culture, the old customs, and the old habits need to disappear. Mind you, and this is something that the Red Guard learned after they followed Mao Zedong through hell and back, they're the first to die. Because once the old ideas, the old culture, and the old customs, and the old habits have been thoroughly destroyed, they'll rebuild them. And they'll rebuild them in the image of the new culture. But if communism has taught us anything, there is no room for sexual deviancy in communism. There is no room for thinking you are other kin in communism. There is no room for not partaking in communism. If you don't pull your weight, you won't eat. And that's communism. Now, mind you, I think not pulling your weight is a problem even in non-communist countries. I mean, I think in, in Western countries, people should try to pull their weight as well. But... Unfortunately, we have created such a weak society, and we have, that we have a lot of people that can't partake in our society. And this is a problem. And the problem is not that these people exist. The problem is that we failed them and allowed them to become people that can't. Because if we go back in history, we don't even have to go that far. 50, 60 years ago, it's enough people partook. I mean, they might not have worked as hard as, as, as the average person, but they did something, unless they really couldn't because of crippling mental disabilities. And okay, you know what? That happens. We can help them. And in a way, they can also partake because they can give other people jobs. Funny as that might seem, it's still true. But now, how dare you call someone a man or a woman? How dare you call someone disabled? How dare you talk about someone's culture other than all cultures are better than ours? 
because our culture needs to be destroyed. Obviously, it's one of the four alls. And if you think this isn't happening everywhere in the Western world, and it is, I'll give you this little clip from Tucker Carlson. They used to say it's as American as mom and apple pie. Can't say that anymore. Both are banned. We first noticed this a few weeks ago when maybe the single dumbest member of Congress, a member from St. Louis called Cori Bush, use the term birthing people rather than mothers. That sounded like something out of a dystopian science fiction novel. But now, in just a few weeks, it's gone mainstream. Now the term birthing people has the endorsement of the White House. At a hearing yesterday, the deputy director of Joe Biden's budget office explained, you really have to be a bigot to use the term woman. Now, obviously, I can give you a clip on everything I mentioned. Seriously, everything. I mean, you've seen the images of the iconoclasty that's going on. You've seen the clips of Black Lives Matter. Well, not clips, photos of Black Lives Matter. The world is losing its shit. Well, not the world. The Western world is losing its shit. There's a reason why countries like Russia and China are looking at the West with bemusement. Because you know what? We can fuck ourselves up all we want. In the end, it's only going to be easier for them. It seems we have a choice. Either we have ended our society and, and we're at the crossroads of the new future, or we stand up and resist. I don't want to say fight back because I really hope we can do this without violence. I truly hope we can do this without violence because the people pushing these ID changes, these culture changes, these custom changes, they're just the Red Guard. They'll be destroyed just like the Red Guard was on the Mao when the new culture comes up. So the ones that are now pushing it the most are nothing but, um, how do you call them? Expendable. Look at what happened to Antifa in America. Oh, when Trump was there, oh yeah, no, there wasn't a Democrat out there who would even raise a finger to talk back to them. But now the Democrats are in power again in the White House. Do you think they really like to have Antifa continue the destruction of their Democrat cities? No, of course not. And I mean, when Trump was in office, the wall was a problem. It really was. How dare he build a wall? Oh, the racist. Oh, terrible. The humanity of it all. He would tell people from Latin America, South America, whatever you want to call it, not to come to the United States. Well, I mean, you could apply all officially for asylum but don't try to break the border it's it's not gonna end, end well for you no no what a racist he was but now that the democrats are in power well kamala harris went to guatemala to tell these uh, people that wanted to hear it not just in guatemala but the countries around guatemala too she was quite specific on that do not come to the mexican-american border you will be turned away now wait a second when Trump did it, he was a bad man. Now that Kamala has done it, hardly anyone bats an eye. Well, because when Trump did it, it was an important thing that the media attacked it because it was the destruction of the four olds that was important. Apparently, the Democrats in America already think that they have enough power that they can start rebuilding their society in their image and they don't want more people there they first have to get control over the people they have and once they do they will probably start building a wall to make sure that they keep in after all this is something we've seen before but recognizing these things is um, very difficult for a lot of people it seems no no I'll be labeled a kook, a conspiracy theorist. And you know what? I truly wish I was. Anyway, criticism as always is more than welcome. Like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And 
I like to hear what you think. So I hope to uh, see your responses. And I hope to see you all next time.